Hello class. So today we are going to talk about planning. Okay. So when we talk about planning, so what we are actually going to start our class today where we actually talk about what you mean by plan. Now when we talk of plan, right? So plan is it's a written document. It's a written document of which specifies the future course of action. How, what specific, how can we actually specify the future course of action? It can be done when you have some predetermined goals and then we specify and we come up with some of the future course of actions to achieve that goal within a given time frame. So it tells us what needs to be done, when it has to be done, how it has to be done and by whom it has to be done. Okay, the next thing is planning. So what do you mean by planning? Planning is a function of management, uh, which in which talks about setting objectives and following by determining a proper course of action to achieve that objectives. So when planning is done, that means managers should be aware of the environmental conditions that the organization faces and then forecast the future conditions. So which also means that managers have to be good decision makers then only they can be able to forecast the future and make right decisions okay so the importance of planning first comes up is planning provides directions right if your planning process is clear you can actually give proper direction to your employees and then they can put in their efforts to ensure to come up with the achieve the right kind of objective that is all the predetermined second comes up is when we talk of that planning reduces risk of uncertainty when you actually plan right planning is done for future and where we do not know what future is there for or what is there in future it's uncertain so planning has to be done when planning is done so what happens we we are planning thinking that we are thinking of some anticipated changes that will happen we are predicting some things to happen according to plan so when we are planning so what happens various activities are planned in that way okay so it becomes much more easier so we are much more well prepared so the third thing when we talk of reduces overlapping and wasteful activities so when we plan what happens we are utilizing we are thinking actually planning out how to utilize the resources in the best possible manner and also to ensure that there are no duplication of activities so the next one is where we talk of like planning helps in promoting innovation right if you can plan properly then you know that what changes are likely you need to bring what changes do you like are do you need to bring about or what are the alternatives that can come about which would help in the progress and so that's the progress of the organizations how can you become a better organization uh, looking into the present scenario so that's when you start coming up with new ideas you come up with innovation all right fifth talks about decision making planning helps in proper decision making if you have proper planning so what happens it helps us to evaluate the courses of action how can we do this through the help of proper decisions, right? So the sixth one talks of establishing standards for controlling. Now, when we talk of uh, controlling, so if we have proper planning, then what happens? Then we have, we can determine the objectives. Then we can actually allow, allot right people in the right departments and we inform them what has to be done, how what the how it has to be done when it has to be done so and how the then standard benchmarks are created and then evaluation takes place so then where when we say controlling so that's when the actual performance is compared with the established benchmarks okay so let's go to the next thing where we talk of steps in planning process how it's been done. What are the steps involved in the planning process? The first talks about establishing goals or objectives. So what happens? Your the organization need to identify specific goals, right? And 
smart goals should be determined now when we say smart goals what does that mean it is talking about smart the s stands for specific that is to target a specific area for improvement the m stands for measurable measurable means where you it's it's quantifiable okay so where you or at least it's quantifiable or at least you suggest an indicator of how do you measure the progress a stands for achievable that is whether the, who will do it who will achieve uh, accomplish that goal and how will it be done r stands for realistic the goals that you want to achieve should be realistic in nature should be it should be achievable and t stands for time bound that is within what time period so second is when we talk of identifying of resources so what happens now when any goal that is being decided should have some financial and human projections uh, associated with this completion so how much what the fund money is required and what are the total amount of how many you uh, how many people do you need what kind of people do you need to achieve this third is to establish goal related tasks now in order to achieve any goal you have to perform some task or project you have to do some to have to undertake some job so what exactly are these tasks okay fourth comes up is prioritize the goals and tasks right so prioritizing means giving importance you need to know which task or which goals has to be given more importance that has to be done and that needs to be tackled first and that has to be addressed first fifth talks up to create creating of assignments and timeliness right so when prioritization of the task happens so that then you have to fix timelines when do you by which time do you want to finish that work and who should be the person who should be assigned to complete that work next comes up is to establish evaluation method evaluation of the work progress has to be done there has to be a proper strategy to evaluate so the uh, evaluate the work done in order to complete the goals in the estimated time period okay seventh talks of the identifying alternative course of action you know why why do we need to have an alternate course of action when we are planning because sometimes even the best plans fail so what do we do if our plan a fails or due to some instance, instances it's beyond our control so we need to have an alternative plans which is called a contingency plan a plan in times of emergency which has to be incorporated if the uh, original plan fails okay next we go to the different types of plans that we have the first is the strategic plans now strategic plans what it comes uh, we are talking about strategy and it how can you plan it when you have a proper mission it has it uh, it is the plans are very much specific with respect to the organization different organizations have their different plans who does it it's a top level managers who does some design these plans for achieving the long term goals okay and strategic plans with the help of strategic plans it helps us to look ahead look towards the future where the organization wants to be in the next 5 uh, years 10 years and if the plan should be aligned with the objectives of the organization right why is it so that the lower and the middle level managers can create compatible plans based on this strategic plan okay next that comes up is where we talk of tactical or administrative plans or intermediate plans right now who is actually uh, or when the, is this being done this is done based on the strategic plans so tactical pa plans what is the purpose of having tactical plans it helps the strategic plans how by translating them into specific plan specific plan for a specific area of the organization it helps in allocating the resources 
coordination of the different departments, right? This is basically concerned with the responsibility and the functionality of the lower level departments to fulfill their parts of the strategic plan. Okay, this is also a process of determination or determining the contributions of each subdivisions. And it's much more narrower in scope than the strategic plans, but it still helps the organization to achieve the long term goals. The third is the operational plans. So these are made by the low level managers. So I just have to tell you before tactical plans or administrative plans, this is where we have the middle level managers coming into play. Operational plans is where we talk of the low level managers. These are uh, the first line of management or the low level managers. So they are talking about some specific plans, specific procedures, processes that occurs within in the lower level of the organization, right? So it tells, it is concerned with how certain tasks can be best accomplished on time given the available resources. So it is talking about the routine task of the department, right? So operation plans can be, again, further divided into where we talk of, we are talking about single plans and ongoing plans. Now let's talk about single use plans, right? Single use plans, these are plans that are intended to be used only once, single means once, okay? These why once because these are concerned with activities that would not be repeated would not be repeated i'm saying that's why once and uh, this is usually done where we are talking of the day-to-day -day operations of an organization say talking about a monthly budget a promotion or advertisement so it's one time so that's why it's one the second is ongoing plans this these are the plans which are uh, actually built to where we are talking we can withstand the test of time they are created several times, undergo several changes whenever necessary. Policies of the company, rules, regulations, procedures. So that's where it comes about. Okay. So our next topic is what we call is the decision making. The decision making. So my next, uh, my next question to you is, what do you mean by decision making? Now, decision making, it's actually selecting the course of action from the alternatives what is the best course of action <clears throat> given the set of alternatives what is the best course of action and it's important why in management because uh, every aspect of management faction is determined by decisions it helps in uh, setting up with definite objectives plans of action structure motivation innovations everything comes into play importance of decision making it, decision making decision helps to utilize the resources in the best possible way it helps the organization to face challenges new problems new challenges it helps if you may are able to make a quick and correct decisions it can solve your problems and new checks you can accept face new challenges business growth right if you have a correct decision and uh, quick decision. So what happens in that case, it helps in better utilization of resources. You can face new challenges, achieve new objectives. Achieving objectives, proper decision helps an organization to achieve its objectives very carefully, very quickly, because these uh, proper decision is where we are talking rational decisions, which is realistic. And how is it made? looking after analyzing and evaluating all the alternatives okay increasing efficiency now efficiency can be how is it done so it's efficiency is well, what do you mean by efficiency it's a relation between returns and cost if returns are high cost is low then there is efficiency so <coughs> sorry rational decision helps in coming up with higher cost at lower higher returns at lower cost facilitates innovation proper rational decision helps in coming up with good innovative procedures 
why we are able to develop new ideas, new products, new processes, which helps us in giving a competitive advantage uh, in the market. Motivating employees with proper, you know, with proper decision making, what happens is it can we can motivate our employees, right? So it all, uh, and if we have, if we are able to motivate our employees, then what happens? There will be stability in the organization. <coughs> Next, we come to the types of decision making. First is where we talk of programmed and non-programmed decisions. Okay. Programmed decisions, when you say it is dealing with structured or routine programs, it's usually taken by the low level management. Non-programmed decisions are used for unstructured and ill-defined situation of non-recurring nature, which is very important for the organization. Major and minor decisions. Major decisions are those which have far-reaching consequences and involve huge expenditure. These are taken by the top executives. Decisions which involve less expenditure or minor decisions and taken by the officer in charge, like minor decisions of purchasing of some stationaries. Policy and operating decisions. Policy decisions, it relates to different policy matters which affect the entire organization and obviously it has to be taken by the top management like bonus, uh, that's one, how, what, what would be the bonus structure, whether to give it or not. Operating decisions, this is where uh, we talk about to putting the policy into action. So policy into action is where we are talking about the lower level management. Actions are done by the employee, so it has to be the lower level management who has to decide how it can be put into practice. Organizational and personal decisions. Organizational decisions, so it's when the executive takes a decision in his official capacity. So these are taken by the executives in its personal capacity. These are personal decisions. Decision of a manager to go on leave for a month. Individual, when we talk of uh, individual and group decisions, Individual decision is when a decision is made by an individual in an organization. And when it's made by a group of individuals, it's called a group decisions. Routine and strategic decisions. So routine decisions is which where we have some work which has been done repetitively that relates to rules, policies, procedures. And they are usually done by the managers at the lower level and the middle level. Strategic decisions are much more important and crucial uh, issues. It concerns about the overall objectives of the organization. And so it has to be done by the top level management. So the process of decision making, right? So what do we have? The first thing that comes up here is identification of the problem right so problem first thing is you the organization has to identify right what exactly is the problem so by problem which means like when there is a discrepancy between the existing uh, level of existing situation and the desired what the uh, desired level of situation there is a problem mismatch between what we want and what is exactly happening so that and we need to identify the situation first. Once the identification is done, then we have to uh, identify the core, identify of the decision criteria, right? So this criteria reflect what you what you want is relevant in your decision. You need to identify factors in order to solve the problem which has been identified before, right? So. When we talk of decision criteria, what does it mean? These are the factors which is relevant and you have to consider while taking a decision, right? So then comes up, the third comes up is allocation of weights to the criteria. So allocation of weights 
to decision criteria, right? So it's based on the nature of the degree of importance. So which uh, a simple approach is to give the most important criteria, um, the maximum weightage, and assign the rest of the the uh, the rest of the weightage to the uh, the other criteria. You just have to go by the, depending on the level of uh, importance, and accordingly you can, uh, give weightage. Next comes up is development of alternatives, right? So what uh, you have to list down the alternatives that can that would help in solving the problem. And what are the different ways how you can solve the problem? So this is brainstorming happening. This has to be done and then checking out what would be the best, right? Okay. Next comes up is analysis of the alternatives. Analysis. So you need to actually analyze each of these alternatives to critically analyze it to see which would be the best. And when analysis happens, we look into the strengths, weaknesses of each alternative and by comparing its criteria, by comparing the weightage. So how important is that criteria and what weightage has been given? Now, once the analysis is done, then comes up the selection of the alternative. So. Uh, based on the analysis, we need to choose that preferred, that alternative which is preferred for the future possible adverse consequences. Best one, we have to see it. Now, after that comes up is implementation of the alternative, right? So we need to put it into practice to implement it, put it into practice, put it into reality, like by implementing, that's when you uh, make a theory into a reality, you bring it into practice to see that whether uh, the alternative that you have chosen is the right one, is able to address the issue, right? And uh, once the implementation takes place, then you need to actually do an evaluation to see whether the decision, your decision of choosing that particular alternative that we have, that you have chosen, that is the best, that is able to solve your problems. If not, then you have to make some changes and the entire process actually goes about like this. It's repeated. Okay. Okay. So we going with the last topic. That is where we are talking about group decision making. So when uh, you make decisions in a group, there has to be brainstorming. Why? Because there are a lot of people who are there, different people have different ideas. And you need to look into the pros and cons to come up and see which is the best, right? So when we talk of brainstorming, what is brainstorming? Brainstorming is when we say it is where a method it is a method for identifying ideas and generating it to solve a specific problem. Coming up, identifying and generating some ideas. When there's a specific problem, you need to identify what are the ideas, what I'm generating, that's generating, come up with new ideas, which would uh, help in solving the problem. So it is. it usually involves a group right and which is headed by a facilitator right okay uh, and the father of brainstorming who introduced it is Alex Osborne so the rules of brainstorming is no ideas are ever criticized like you cannot say this is bad you have to look into the pros and cons the more radical the ideas the better it means it has to be very realistic it cannot be idealistic and the quantity of idea production is stressed that is the quantity of idea for how much ideas can you come about it's quantity required it's important more the number of ideas better it is improvement of ideas by others is encouraged so when you have some ideas how can you improve upon it that is given uh, in actually given importance okay so next comes up is the importance of brainstorming what's the importance so it helps us in our critical thinking power, in our problem solving, problem solving skills, both as an individual and a team, because we are actually rattling our head to come up with something uh, as ideas, which is which makes sense, which is uh, realistic. It improves our problem solving skills. 
by finding new and unusual solutions. When we brainstorm, we come up with some unusual uh, solutions, new ideas, new solutions. Okay, ideas are not criticized or rejected. So, so interesting proposals can be refined gradually. It's not very, so which are ideas, which is uh, proposals, which are really interesting, they can be more modified coming up, bringing in some uh, changes and come up with, uh, make to make it look much more realistic, much more appealing. Acceptance of new idea is usually greater when the decision is made by a group who's charged with its implementation. Like when you generate an idea, we are actually generating, we do not know whether it can be implemented in reality or not, right? But it should, if the group which is actually implementing that idea, if they can decide, which is the best because they are the ones who are going to face uh, implement it, they're the ones who are facing the reality, then it becomes better. So when you're going for a brainstorming, it also helps in, helps in improving the working atmosphere because uh, everyone is participating. So motivation actually happens. Okay, so this is a brainstorming example that we have. Right, so that's all that we have today. See you in the next class.